welcome to this week's Mile Minute. I am Carmen. I'm a myofunctional therapist. I have a global online practice, so I see absolutely every single one of my clients, even if they live in the same town as me, I see them online because really, let's face it, in today's day and age, it's all about efficiency and effectiveness. So I'm your girl for that. So I am super happy that you're here. Today, I am going to be talking about running on eight cylinders. Any of you who have been following me for a while know that I talk about that a lot because to me, running on eight cylinders is all about feeling your best and functioning as your best and being your best self. If you are running on two or three or God forbid, no cylinders, then Houston, we have a problem. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, many of my clients, as well as the dozens of emails that I answer every week, uh, many of these people ask how myofunctional impairment or something like a tongue tie, how can it be affecting their wellness umbrella, like I like to call it. Um, so today I'm going to be drilling down on three areas where I see wellness is affected. I'm, I'm mostly going to be talking about adults, but it can really be extrapolated to children as well. But what I have found is that children generally just don't complain or they don't, they, they can't really identify some of these areas. So just know that if, if this applies to your kiddo, then that is really the same as what it would apply for, for an adult. So really for me, the three biggest areas where I see wellness affected for adults is um, breathing, like mouth breathing versus nasal breathing, uh, sleep, and then digestive issues. So first let's talk about mouth breathing versus nasal breathing. Really, the first thing is we all should be nasal breathers. Uh, I think many of you guys know that. So our body gets best oxygenation levels when we nasal breathe. Now, one of the things that prevents that is chronic congestion, and I'm constantly fighting that with my clients. And it's a vicious cycle of mouth breathing causes more congestion in the nose with the goblet cells, which causes more mouth breathing. Also, a lot of people have trouble with, with uh, just chronic congestion. That can come from an inflammatory diet. It can come from things like dairy, it can come from pets that people are allergic to and they don't really realize it. So it's it's part of my job to help my clients really, uh, really try and get to the bottom of that. My goal is to get all of my clients off of meds. Now, everybody's not super excited about that at the beginning, but generally by the end, most of them are because people understand that medicines are a band-aid and often it's it's covering up other things. So if I can coax my clients to get off of the meds and, and they're able to see uh, how their congestion improves, uh, usually goes away. Uh, I have shared this story with a lot of clients in a lot of different platforms or you know publicly like this. I used to take four allergy pills, but I was a mouth breather. And so now that I'm a nasal breather, I take none. And I, I'm very clear, I, I never am sick, I never have any concerns there. So that's why it's so important. The other thing about nasal breathing versus mouth breathing is when you nasal breathe, you get nitric oxide, which is in your sinuses, and that helps the uptake of oxygen into your lungs. So on, on a cellular level, you're getting better oxygenation. Now, no, nobody's turning blue. You know, you're not having anything like that going on as far as not getting oxygen, but your body is getting more of what it desperately wants when you are nasal breathing. Uh, and then often when we're mouth breathing, we're over breathing. So we're disrupting that, that homeostasis of our, of our body when we are mouth breathing. So for me, that's really why mouth breathing versus nasal breathing is, is really at the top of my list for how it affects your wellness. So now going a little bit deeper, my next topic is sleep. That breathing, that mouth breathing, it, it's affecting sleep. And let's face it, we need sleep. We need restorative, rejuvenating, uh, refreshing sleep. And when somebody is mouth breathing, they are not getting that. They have poor sleep quality. Uh, many of them have poor sleep quantity. Uh, and a lot of people experience poor sleep efficiency, meaning they lay in bed for a long time, but they, they don't sleep for a long time. 
Um, these people also have low energy. A lot of my clients have, it, you know, their complaint is weight gain, which equals more low energy. So it's a vicious cycle. So for me, sleep is really, really important in the overall uh, umbrella of wellness, if you will. And then the other thing is digestion. So many of my clients have hiccuping, belching, bloating, gas, you name it, acid reflux. A lot of these people take meds and they might be over the counter, they might be prescription meds. Some of these people have been taking these meds for so long, they forget they're taking them. It's just they're normal, but it's not normal. Uh, a lot of these people get less than uh, ideal nutritional uh, uptake of their body be, or absorption because they're not chewing adequately. Uh, when somebody has a tongue tie, the tongue does not get to be the tool it's supposed to be. There is 16 muscles in your tongue. And when it's tied down, it's like having your legs tied together and you sit in a wheelchair all your life. You're not going to just suddenly get up and, and, and dance across the, the ballroom floor. The same with the tongue. But when the tongue is tied down, it doesn't get to be the tool. So it doesn't help manipulate the food. It doesn't help with bilateral chewing. And many people with a tongue tie, it's exhausting to them. So they just chew really quickly and swallow the food without chewing it um, like they should. So a lot of those digestive issues come from rapid eating behaviors, not chewing well enough, and then a lot of people also gulp air while they swallow because their swallow is incorrect. Okay, that wraps up the three areas where I find my adult clients are operating subpar. So they're not operating on eight cylinders. They're not wonderful. They're they don't feel wonderful, they don't feel energized, they don't feel healthy, they don't feel like they are operating at their best because they're not. Uh, these are areas that I really focus on when I do therapy with my clients. Uh, if you want more information about my programs, you can always go to my website, um, myofunctionaltherapyforyou.com uh, and that's for the number four and the letter U, so it's kind of weird there. Uh, but it doesn't have to be me. I, I stress just find somebody that you know, like, and trust, that you uh, appreciate how they educate you, that you like what they have to say, and that you can work with them. So that's the most important thing. I will be talking today on my Facebook uh, page, at The Tongue Trainer, and I'm going to be talking about the notion of how you don't know something is broken until you know it's broken. So many of my clients, when I do their comprehensive exam, I point out things that for them have just been normal and they had no idea that it was wrong. So talk about making you function on fewer cylinders. If you have no idea that it's not normal, then how can you fix it, right? So I will be talking about that here in just a little bit on Facebook. Uh, again, that's at the Tongue Trainer. I'll be there at 1130 Mountain Time this morning. And last, I'd like to make sure that if you don't know about it or you haven't done it yet, at the bottom of any one of my blogs, you can get access to my quick assessment tool. This is a great screening tool for you or your child. There's an adult and a child version there when you download it. And this gives you 25 questions to help screen yourself to see if it makes sense to meet with somebody like me or somebody else and move forward in the process. Um, many people will email me and say, you know what, Carmen, I did this test and I have you know, 20 yeses or I have 19 yeses, that means that there's something going on. So like it says at the top of the assessment, if you have a lot of yeses here, you have myofunctional impairment. And if you want to function on eight cylinders or you want to have a great wellness umbrella, as I call it, then it's time to definitely dig into that. Um, so take the quiz uh, or not the quiz, take the assessment, download it, uh, answer the questions, let it sit with you. If it resonates with you, reach out to somebody, okay? Um, remember, I'm always here if you need me, and I'm gonna see you in the next Mayo Minute. Bye for now.